You don't have to learn 3D to be a good painter, but it definitely doesn't hurt to think like a modeler when painting materials. And in this video, I'll give you some insight into basic 3D principles that can help you paint with more confidence. Hey Art Leads, welcome to the Artwatch channel, the program where we train our creative muscles on a daily basis. We all love suggesting materials in our paintings. From leather to metal or stone, good material indication adds another level of richness to our paintings. The problem is, when we start learning to paint, we have a hard time understanding what makes these materials look the way they do. While we learn fundamentals such as value, color and light, we still might get confused about properly suggesting different materials. And this is where 3D programs can actually help us. Since 3D software is binary, it relies on strict input, so it needs to assign various characteristics to materials in order to properly convey them. And as painters, we can learn from this. So for this video, I want to give you five characteristics you can keep in mind when painting. Now, first up is value. Obviously, the local value of an object will affect how light interacts with it. Darker values will absorb more light and lighter values will absorb less. Keep in mind that different colors have different value ranges and different colors will also affect the light differently. Besides value, we have texture. To put it simple, texture is the amount of surface variation a certain material has. Very smooth texture has very little changes in the surface variation and can therefore bounce the light easier. Whereas rough texture has a lot of changes in its surface variation and therefore it scatters the incoming light. This scattering of light, by the way, is what we call the fusion and it's the third characteristic we can attribute to materials. Now, before we continue, I want to recap the first two. We have value and texture. These two characteristics are key in influencing the other three we'll talk about today. An object's color or value and its surface texture will determine how light will interact with this object. So when you are painting a certain material, make sure you already keep in mind how value and texture will play a role in lighting. So as we've established, the scattering of light through texture is called diffusion. And diffusion is the object's ability to diffuse the light meaning diffusing or disabling the intensity of that light source or light sources. A couple of examples of very diffused materials are rubber or wood. Since these materials have very rough textures, they will diffuse the incoming light that hits the surface and scatter that light. Sitting opposite of that is our fourth characteristic, specularity. Specularity is the object's ability to reflect the intensity of the light source. So let's say we have a key light like the sun. If we were to directly look at the sun, we would see a very intense light source. An object with high specularity, such as a billiard ball, will be able to reflect that intensity almost one to one. If we compare that to our rubber ball, we can see that the rubber material is very low in specularity. Lastly, we have one more characteristic that can suggest different materials that all have high specularity. This fifth characteristic is called reflectivity. Reflectivity is the object's ability to reflect the environment in which it is sitting. It's a little different from specularity since we are not only reflecting the intensity of the light source, but also the bounce light that is suggesting our environment. Let's say we take our billiard ball and we put it next to a chrome ball. Both objects are very high in specularity and are reflecting our key light equally intense. Yet the chrome ball is much higher in reflectivity as it is also showing us the room in which it is sitting, almost like a mirror. So the fusion, specularity and reflectivity will play a big part in what kind of material we want to suggest as artists. Once we know this, you'll have an easier time to understand why, for instance, the sharp end of a knife or the corners of a room have more specularity and less diffusion. If you know the answer, let me know in the comments. When painting, try to be aware of how your object is influenced by its environment, since the characteristics of the material you're trying to imply will interact with that environment. Also, it wouldn't hurt to first think of a common material like wood, stone or metal that you'd like to learn in a Pentagon score type of way, where you attribute points to each characteristic 
depending on the material you are trying to paint. Any visualization helps. Ultimately, you won't need this visual representation anymore, but it will definitely help you be more confident when painting scenes from imagination, where you are trying to suggest fictitious objects in an imaginary environment. So I hope these five characteristics can help you paint more convincing materials. You can see that by using the knowledge of simple 3D tools, we can improve our painting efficiency significantly and ultimately become more confident when painting. This video is just a small recap of an entire classroom on material characteristics available on artwad.com. So if you'd like to learn more, be sure to check it out. Happy learning, art leads.